What would it be like to live in a world where you can accurately predict and calculate what is going to happen? Well, we're halfway there, through the power of maths and logic. Now, before I get into detail with uh, some crazy, spooky, weird ideas that I've been having and totally blow your tiny minds, uh, not to sound condescending there, but let's just quickly talk about the gameplay. It's uh, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer playing on, I believe, Firebase. I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, playing as my uh, adept, my uh, human female. I believe I called her Linda because I'm cool like that and I love my standard names. You know, I've got Linda, Gary. Who else have we got? Can't remember anymore. Um, so you'll be seeing me warping, drop waving, doing all that awesome stuff, and uh, hopefully not going down too many times. Also, as a, a special treat and present to you guys who like listening to my voice, uh, you're going to hear me for 15 long minutes. And so, <laughs> sorry to the guys who don't like listening to my voice, I'm one of those. Um, this may not be the video for you if you don't like listening to me or saying intellectual or difficult to understand things, which makes me sound particularly boastful, which is not what I meant, it's just, you know, craziness, and it doesn't make much sense to me, so I'm not quite sure why it will make sense to anyone else, but I'm known for my insanity and randomness and just total inability to construct cognitive thoughts correctly. Right, let's get this started with the good old-fashioned theory of peaks and troughs. Um, pretty much what uh, the whole idea of this is that life kind of goes up and down like a graph almost. Uh, so, you know, someday you'll be, you know, fantastic day, and strictly speaking, mathematically, the day after isn't going to be as good as that day, and the way math works, it suggests that these days are going to go on a downward trend until you're in a bad place, and then you start coming back up again. Um, it's been, you know, it's mathematically proven, this is true, this is what happens in life. However, never get fooled into the trap of thinking that life is just peaks and troughs, no. Think of it more as like a, uh, a good movie that you get to watch, um, because the main issue with this theory is that you can't tell the scale of it. You can't work out whether you are on, you know, generally a big going up or generally a big going down, because, you know, you might be having the best year of your life, but you have a couple days where, you know, things don't go so great. So remember that, uh, despite being a big curve, it's not completely straight, you know, there's going to be wobbles going up and down, more like one of those heartbeat monitors that you see on casualty. Now just to dispel some of the skeptics here, I'm going to give a real life example, and it's true, you know, this is just one example of many, and it, it works, it happens, I'm not totally crazy, I'm not making this stuff up, this is, this is the one part of uh, what I'm going to say that's actually been proven. So let's use the Sports Illustrated cover jinx. Now, uh, that sounds kind of weird, but it's just based off the Sports Illustrated magazine itself. Uh, millions of superstitious readers and athletes believe that an appearance on Sports Illustrated cover is really just a kiss of death, because it's found that uh, out of uh, about 2,500 issues, almost 1,000 of the people who have appeared on it have suffered misfortune or decline in performance following a cover appearance, which is about 37.2% of the time. And that's pretty incredible maths, if you think about it. Um, it shows that because, of course, if you're going to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated, you're going to be a fantastic athlete in their prime, really riding on a high. That's, unfortunately, according to maths, that high is not going to stay. You're going to be going back down and going to be coming back to the rest of us, you know, just average citizens. Now, this is where we get to the, you know, Jake's given some pretty cool thoughts here, and you should listen up, and uh, this is the real uh, meaty part of the commentary. Now, when I feel bad, when I because I've got self-diagnosed uh, weird bipolarity, I'm not, I'm not feeling down all that much, maybe about half an hour out of a week I feel kind of depressed, but the rest of the time I feel ecstatic, and it's kind of weird, it's, it's probably not for me to explain in this commentary, but always just remember that when you're down, there's a curve, and the curve's going to be going back up soon. Um, Try not to think about it when you're on a high. Also remember that, of course, we can't predict how long this is going to keep going. Uh, and also, mass isn't equal, you know. The graph doesn't follow a set pattern. Sometimes you might be going up and then only staying at the top for a little bit, or might be going down and then being down for a long time. It's not always a perfect graph. Mass very rarely is, nothing ever is. So just remember this, when you're feeling in a bad place, and even, look, compared to maths, if you've had a bad life or if you had a bad year, then Strictly speaking, you're going to have a good time soon. It's going to get better. The longer the bad things can be going on, then the higher, strictly speaking, or, you know, mathematically speaking, the higher and the greater your success is going to be. Unfortunately, remember, also, you know, got to keep giving the counterpoint here. It kind of uh, brings true to the adage, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So, you know, if you might be really high, you might go down again too. 
So just bear that in mind, guys. When you're feeling bad, if you're in a bad place, then tomorrow, strictly speaking, mathematically speaking, and according to your good friend Jake, everything is going to be fine. So uh, remember that. Maths and life, part one. Now we will move on to the idea, or <clears throat> what people often make the mistake of doing, is drawing conclusions, comparisons, and finding correlation between things that often don't happen. And just remember to think about that. Coincidences, some people believe, don't believe in coincidences, you know, especially you see them in spy films. You know, you see the people who are like, Oh, I saw that red mini twice in one day. It must mean that I'm being followed and should run and return to my handler, who will then get me out of the country. No. Don't be overly introduced... Introduced? Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't be overly infatuated with the idea of coincidences and drawing conclusions from things. Now, I'm going to use another real-life example, because real-life examples is what about this all about. Which didn't make much grammatical sense. That last sentence is going to go back and analyse it, but we're going to keep on going anyway. Real life and maths is, of course, obviously the name of this video, so I'm going to be using real life examples. Now, here's another good one. The fact that some people believe that um, due to proximity to uh, mobile phone uh, telecommunications devices, it increases the risk of someone getting cancer. Now, this, um, I can't, you know, overall say because I don't have the correct data or the real desire to go out and find out, because it probably is okay to find out. But let's start off with scattergraphs. Now, if you get yourself a scattergraph, I'll try and find a picture and get it up on the screen for you of a good scattergraph. Uh, they are totally random. There is not what people would uh, assume with masses. That, remember, with masses, there is no logic, there is no order. It's not going to come up neat or even, it's not going to come up, you know, uh, as you, uh, the best way of describing it is in secondary school when you're taught to draw a solid, it's, you know, dots connected together, you know, squished together with no real room between them, whereas a scatter graph and, you know, real life ends up looking more like the graph you draw of um, a element in a gaseous state, where everything is flying around and there are some clusters and there are some areas of total openness where there is nothing. Now, what the issue with this whole cancer and sorry, cancer and mobile phones thing is that people are seeing a cluster of perhaps more uh, cancer patients or cancer fatalities or whatever in an area where there is also coincidentally a mobile phone, telephone, pole, wire, pylon. That's the word I'm looking for. So. Telephone poles probably aren't going to cause cancer. I think anyone can work out that a piece of wood is unlikely to give you some sort of cell mutation. Now, what the people have done is they've jumped to the conclusion they've seen, yes, these two pieces of data do indeed link up, but so does the fact that perhaps maybe going somewhere where there's more water uh, also has a direct correlation between the amount of malaria deaths in Africa. You, that, there may be reasons for that because there'd be more people there, there'd be a greater conglomeration of different people, mosquitoes would also go there. Yes, you can base it off these other facts that you can also bring into your whole theory, but it's nothing more than speculation, and often people forget, not remember, I was going to say remember, but you need to forget, because what we're doing is forgetting here, that jumping to conclusions and drawing conclusions from two pieces of data cannot cannot work. You need to keep backing things up. The issue with this scientific report was that, uh, sorry, it wasn't scientific report because scientists are smart enough to know that uh, you should, you know, repeat your test multiple times to get a more accurate result. This was, I believe, a piece done by journalists who, I'm not going to insult journalists here, well, I'm going to insert, insert, insert journalists, I'm going to insert them into this commentary right here in front of you. Um, not meaning to insult journalists, but they don't do as good a job of finding out the full picture as someone who is trained as a scientist would, um, mainly it's for sensationalist stories, to get those sales. So they're going to want to find something that is going to make their story, uh, or, sorry, their newspaper sell copies, or get views if they're on TV, or <laughs> get views on YouTube, yay! Um, so they're going to try and find a story that sounds not kind of crazy enough or interesting enough or shocking enough to sell copies but also something that's been backed up with enough you know scientific sounding stuff that the average guy the layman is going to understand it mr joe blogs or however you want to call him i don't never understand joe blogs because he's probably not a tumblr freak 
I'm not meaning to insult Tumblr, I'm not meaning to insert Tumblr people, I'm sorry, we're no longer using the word insult, instead we're using insert, but uh, I'm doubting that Joe Blogs is an avid blogger or a poster of content onto his own website. So, remember guys, don't make jumps to conclusions or correlations between two pieces of evidence which may simply be coincidence. Now I'm just going to finish uh, around here in a couple of seconds because uh, I'm drawing, drawing to a close my ideas and I'm bringing everything to a, a crew or a crux or however you're supposed to pronounce it because it's got X on the end and X is make things kind of weird in the English language. Um, I kind of like this because it makes me sound intellectual. I'm really not that smart. I'm just kind of, you know, explaining ideas in a way that hopefully is trying to make sense and kind of, it is what people do. It's kind of the same with Jesus. I'm being a mathematical and life-based Jesus right now just because I'm presenting ideas in a kind of way that appeals to people, probably in quite a biased way, honestly, because I'm not allowing people to provide the other side of the argument. And it also allows me to make some kind of cheap jokes and silly things. For example, Returning to the correlation thing, just remember, big rule, just because there is correlation, that does not mean it is causation. The two things do not cause each other, they just occur coincidentally with each other. For example, try the logic of this one. If the temperature is up and the Norfolk coastline is eroding, therefore the fact that the temperature is going up is eroding the Norfolk coastline. No. There's correlation, but there's not causation. One is not causing the other, they just happen to be the same. Or, how about the temperature is up and a species of frog is dying out, therefore global warming is killing the frogs. This, that one may be true, actually. That was kind of a silly example for me to give, because that would perhaps be caused by destruction of habitat, or the fact that the animals simply cannot live, because I believe frogs are cold-blooded, which wouldn't make any sense, because if there was more heat than they would be warm-blooded, which would allow them to survive faster, but global warming sometimes means that it gets colder, for example, weather around here has been kind of a lot more wacky since, you know, maybe a hundred years ago, so perhaps actually the temperature is getting colder, the little frogs are freezing, and, you know, maybe, I don't know, perhaps that wasn't the best example. So just remember, last bit on this before I'll talk about some other things in the last uh, three minutes of the commentary. Correlation does not cause causation. Big thing to remember. Now let's talk about some completely other th you know, unrelated things that hopefully will not make your mind hurt as much as it made mine trying to explain half of this random knowledge. Commentaries are going to be released by me, I believe, I'm thinking I want to do one in the week, you know, and Wednesday is a good day because it is in the middle of the week, and maybe it gives you guys something. The hump of the week, the hump of the week is the best day, as my religious education teacher says, because, you know, just like we're going uh, at the start, the, it, the week is kind of like a graph, hump, hill thing. It goes up in the middle and then down to the week. I don't know how it's supposed to work. But it's the hump of the week, and maybe it's something to look forward to. So I'm thinking a commentary on Wednesday and Saturday. I tried back on my own old channel, because I've been around for a very long time, guys, I've been around since uh, early Modern Warfare 2 days, so you guys think I'm just a new up-and-coming commentator? No, I've been around for a very long time, since before Partnerships, actually. I was watching uh, back in COD 4, but I've only started uploading since Modern Warfare 2. Back when one of my old channels, however, I tried to upload a commentary every day, and it didn't work. The videos weren't good enough, it just didn't feel right. However, with Let's Plays, I can do an episode every day, because Let's Plays don't require quite the same amount of, you know, just... You, you gotta, when you're doing a commentary, you've got to get into it, you've got to kind of know what you want to say, almost, because... I, I had to prepare this. I didn't. I didn't make. No, I didn't write down the script for the video on my Xbox Ahoy. But I, you know, mentally brought up some ideas, and you know, I kind of prepared myself for it. If I've got any ideas, I'll jot them down, and maybe I'll use them in the commentary sometime. Uh, Let's plays, on the other hand, you just kind of wing it and talk about what you want to talk about, and it's fun, and I like that, which is why I like Let's plays. Let's plays are fun, and honestly, I wish I could upload more episodes because. I want to go, I like recording videos, it's fun, that's why I do it, and I don't do it for any particular reason apart from the fact that it's awesome and people that, that listen to my sexy dulcet tones every day, and yeah, Let's Plays are good, I wish I could do more of them, unfortunately my internet means I can't upload more than one episode, I wish I could, uh, I think it's something to do with the way I'm rendering files as well, because a gigabyte for a 10 minute video, I'm, I'm seeing on YouTube people are doing 300 megabyte 20 minute videos with the same quality as me, I, I kind of need a hand if anyone knows about render settings, I doubt they do, what do you ask about, but you know, if there's anyone else, leave in the comment section and I'll talk to you about it on Skype. So I often go off on tangents, so let's take a big 
leaping jump back. You see, I moved my voice over here, so it's hopefully on the left side a little bit more. Maybe, I'm not quite sure how this blue snowball works. Am I over here more? Yep, 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 yep. Hopefully you can tell I'm moving from side to side there. If not, then I moved from side to side. Back, way back to the start, I am going to be doing uh, videos, uh, commentaries rather, on Saturdays and Wednesdays, Let's Play episodes every single day of the week, and I believe we are coming to the end, so thank you very much for watching guys, if you enjoyed my mad ramblings then please leave a like and a comment if you want to you know, comment something, I'd be interested to see what you guys have to say, uh, so thank you very much guys, and uh, peace out, or rather, maths and logic, out.